Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome, this is if this is your first time here. Uh, I'm doing my full tarot and oracle and Lenormand, and my full deck collection from A to Z. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my tarot collection from A through D. Let's get started. Once again, beginning with a numbered deck, my tarot deck collection begins with the 78 tarot mythical. This is currently my one and only 78 tarot deck, but I did back the 78 tarot magic. Um, I think the mini, I wanna say, and I did actually get this signed when I went to um, the Northwest Tarot Symposium, I think my first ever year that I went. Um, this is a great deck. Now, typically collaboration decks are not my thing. And if you're new to 78 tarot, then you might not know that each card is illustrated by a different artist. So the artist names are actually on every single card. So the art styles vary quite a bit. But I love the mythical theme. It really just does something for me. I have to say this is one of those decks that I enjoy having but I don't really reach for to read with like in practice very much at all. So I'll be interested to see how the 78 Tarot Magical works out for me. But this one is special to me because it was my first one. And I still really love sitting down and going through all of the cards or reading about the different um, myths in the guidebook. I really do enjoy that. So this is a, a neat thing in my collection, but not something that I actually use a whole lot. But I do think it's really cool. I don't have a lot of desire to have a whole bunch of different 78 tarot decks, but the magical theme was one that just I couldn't pass up. Uh, so that is the 78 tarot mythical. Next up the Alice Tarot. I love this. I also love this fabric, especially because on one side she's going upside down and the other side she's going right side up, which is just so Alice. Uh, anyway, this is the Baba Studios Alice Tarot and I love this deck. Uh, this is the Alice Tarot for me. I'm just really bonded to it. I think that the guidebook is really, really, why did I zoom out to show the cards? I don't know, whatever, here we go. Um, I really enjoy how the guidebook gives you a abridged version of the full um, Alice in Wonderland and through the Looking Glass stories, including little thumbnails of where each of these scenes shows up. I just think this is a delightful Alice tarot. It's so vivid and beautiful. I love the cold foil stamping. It's a little bit more delicate than it has been on some of their other decks. And I really love that because it adds the bling without obscuring the images. I just think they struck a really beautiful balance in this deck. Um, I just love the little highlights, but it just doesn't, it doesn't take over. And I love that about this. So it's just that perfect sweet spot of that cold foil, colorful stamping that they do on their cards. Love this. So glad I picked it up. I do read with it. I do really, really genuinely enjoy it and the Alice story. So love that deck. Next up is the Alley Man's Tarot. I just, I don't know how I feel about this, you guys, to be completely honest. Um, this was really cool in theory. Let's just zoom this out because this is just so huge. Um, this is just really chaotic. I can't really use it. It doesn't feel like a usable deck. It was really fun and exciting to go through all of the cards, but like, I mean, there's no way I can shuffle that. I'd have to pick out uh, which cards I was going to use or work with. It was just, I feel like, I feel like for me, this deck was just about the, oh, that's from the Somnia Tarot. See, this deck was just like for the experience of it. You know, it felt like that's what the, that's what the point was. Um, but as fun as it is to kind of go through all of these different images, and it was kind of like fun to sort of shop it in a way, like to just kind of think about what all the different decks are that these images came from. And I don't know, that part was really fun. But ever since I got it, it's just sat on a shelf. Like I just don't, Oh, I just don't have a lot of interest in doing anything with it. And I guess I might be kind of alone in that. I feel like, yeah, that was upside down. Um, I love that card is so beautiful. Um, wow. I've got some upside down in here. That's like a whole mood. Uh, this is just, I don't know. It's cool, but I don't, I, I'm not sure that this is ultimately for me. So if you don't know, as I go through these, oh, I know what that's from. As I go through these, I'm going to be putting anything that I'm not sure about into a basket to be reviewed for a later this or that video or something. And I do think this is going to go into that basket because I'm just ultimately not sure this is something I need to keep, but it was a really cool experience to go through it. I know how like ridiculous does that sound, but it was really fun. So I'm going to put this away in the, um, not so sure pile. Okay, next up is the Anna Kay Tarot. The Anna Kay is a favorite. Um, this is a deck that 
I love recommending to beginners. I feel like the artwork is really, really uh, expressive. It really shows, I think, the different different ways to interpret the cards, of course, but through Anna Kay's perspective. Through her perspective, we really get to see the meaning of the card based on how it's illustrated. I just think it was really artfully done. The court cards are incredibly expressive. Um, it's a very people-y deck and it's great for people-y readings. Mine has seen a ton of use. I still use it a lot whenever I'm doing any kind of beginning or beginner um, educational stuff here on the channel. And I just, I feel like it's a really, really great deck. And the guidebook is a really, really good deck for beginners as well. So that is the um, Anna Kay Tarot. The Antique Anatomy Tarot. So this actually lives with the um, Oracle of Oddities. So I'll just pull out just the tarot. Um, the Antique Anatomy Tarot is, I think, a really special deck in this space. Um, I don't have anything else quite like this. It, it is, as a pip deck, a really, really readable pip deck, in my opinion, but that will be a case-by-case um, -case sort of thing where your mileage may vary. I love that I have it, and I've really gotten some good readings out of it. I do enjoy having a few pip decks that are favorites in my collection because I really enjoy using pip decks on purpose. Like I reach for them specifically for a sort of neutrality in my readings. And I tend to prefer working with pip decks over working with Marseille decks. So I like having a few of these essential pip decks. And if you're not sure what the difference is, to me, a pip deck is just any deck that doesn't have scenes, but rather has like symbols on the, on the numbered minor arcana cards instead of like scenes where there's like people or animals or whatever that's a pip deck but Marseille follows a very specific tradition and has a very specific style to it um so I tend to reach for these kind of like RWS based or Rider Waite Smith based pip decks a lot the next deck I don't have to show so I will pop up a picture of it on the screen but it is called the Art of Life Tarot I don't have it because it literally lives on my desk at work it has since I got it and I love it for that it's out of print now but it does have really beautiful pieces of art uh, for each card that really lines up beautifully with the meaning of the card, as well as a quote, uh, which also lines up with the meaning of the card. And the box turns into a bit of a frame. It's perfect for an on my desk tarot deck. So that is where it lives. And it's unlikely to ever leave that spot. The Asherah Tarot uh, is next on the list. And this is a Thoth based deck. And I do really like it. In fact, I like this better than the, I do like this a little bit better than the Thoth, I think. Um, it has a tree of life there. I really, really love this imagery. I feel as though all the colors, oops, hello. I can't, I can do this. I feel like all the colors just do a really good job of drawing me into the image. It feels almost meditative in its quality. And I love that about it. I like that it's a little bit of a different take on the Thoth. It's not just like a copy of the same scenes, but it's reimagined in a way. And yet the colors are really on point and they feel really anchored to the associations or the correspondences of the card. I feel like the meanings are definitely in here, but it's just a little more interesting to me in a way and vibrant. I do think that Lady Frida Harris's uh, artwork is also really beautiful, but I just, I don't know, there's something about this. I really like it. So I have this as my little pocket um, Thothy deck, which is super fun. And that is the Asherah Terra mini or the Asherah Terra poker size uh, version. The Atlantis Terra was actually sent to me and I didn't think this would be one that I would fall in love with, but I kind of did. It's got a quirk and a weirdness to it. Let me zoom you in again. I might just stay zoomed in, whatever. Um, it's got some real quirk. The, it's, it's a hand cut, handmade deck. Um, and the creator sells them. She's, a, she's an Australian artist and she sells these on eBay. Um, they're all hand embellished. So all these like little bits of metallic are all done by hand, hand drawn on every single deck. So it's really unique. It's got that rough handmade quality to it. It has a very otherworldly oceany feel. So it does have that sort of Atlantean vibe. And I think it's really cool. I, I wasn't expecting for this to be one that I'd be like, yeah, definitely, definitely at my alley, but it really has turned out to be, and I do enjoy it quite a bit. It just, it brings that sort of mystical, magical, almost alien oceany vibe and I am here for it. So that is the Atlantis Tarot. Uh, the Bohemian Animal Tarot. Oh my gosh. This is such a great deck. Um, to be completely fair though, I had this whole like love affair with this deck and I think it's kind of faded, which is a, a shame, but I ended up sort of falling in love with a different one, but I just... Man, this one, I don't know. Do Have I fallen out of love with it? Maybe not. Maybe I haven't. I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is so sweet. The guidebook is really, really good. I do think it's an underrated deck for sure. But I was thinking about the Tarot of Curious Creatures, which I also have in my collection, and thinking that maybe it's better than this, or better for me rather than this. But this has a very, very different vibe. It doesn't feel quite as funny. Like, it is funny, but it doesn't feel quite as, I don't know, 
make me laugh out loud as the Tarot Curious Creatures. This feels like it actually has a little more animal wisdom in it. I don't know though. I had like a very brief, like I said, sort of love affair with this deck and just, it charmed the pants off of me, but I can't say that I've been real excited to want to reach for it ever since then. But I, gosh, I really, it's really great. It's really great. And the guidebook is really, really good. But I think actually I'm going to put this one in the maybe pile to consider whether or not it will stay long term, but it is a really great deck and it's mass market. Um, yeah. Look at the bag match too. That's a standard size Peggy bag, by the way. Next up is the Bonefire Tarot. I love, 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 love this deck. This is my independent edition. Is it all? What has happened here? I'm like part upside down. Oh no. Wait. Hold please. I'm having a whole, I'm having a whole moment. I just used this recently and some of my cards got reversed. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. I love, love these cards. Um, I like this indie edition that I was able to trade for because it gave me a really usable size. The cards can be a little big on the mass market version. The mass market version is also glossy, but I love, uh, love this deck. I love Gabby's artwork. I love how busy it is. It gives me like all these like different things for my intuition to hone in on or look at or notice in any given reading. And I just, I love it. It's really good for any kind of fiery sort of subject. It does obviously have a very fiery sort of feel. Love, love, love the bone fire so much. The Boo Tarot. Oh my goodness. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. The Boo Tarot is so cute. Um, this is a really fun deck. I'm not sure that I love the cardstock, but I've been able to sort of see past it to work with it. It does get a little bit like warped when you shuffle it. But oh my gosh, these, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm too zoomed out now. I can't make up my mind, y'all. Um, it is so stinking cute and such a fun, sweet, kind Halloween deck. I know it's more than a Halloween deck. I feel like you could definitely use this year round. It's so adorable. I freaking love it. It's probably, it's definitely, not probably, it's definitely my most adorable October-ish deck. I have such fond memories of working with this deck, even from the first year, which was just this last October. I just had a really good time using it for readings for myself and for others. But yeah, it's, it's getting quite, quite warped, which is a darn shame. That is the downside for sure. I'm not sure what the deal was with this particular cardstock, but I can really feel the like curve, especially up here at the bottom from the shuffle, which is unfortunate. But yeah, it just like, I don't know if you can see, watch as I like sort of sh shuffle it. See how it kind of like, it does weird stuff. It doesn't behave like normal cardstock, um, but the images are just, they're just, they're really great. Um, it does feel, it feels a heck of a lot cheaper than it was, which is, which is unfortunate. That's all. Um, I wish I could make it be, I wonder if that's ultimately, it's really bothering, bothering, it's really bothering me. I can't talk. It's really bothering me how much it's warped since I last used it. It feels like it's just getting worse and worse every time, but it's still so dang usable. I feel like I was, I, at first I felt like I was too harsh on it, but now I'm pulling it out and I'm like, gosh, it's just really I feel like it's not a deck that wants to be riffle shuffled and that is how I shuffle, but it's so cute. I don't think I can bring myself to part with it, but dang, I feel like that's probably going to end up being a bit of a deal breaker because it just, it's just taking a beating and I haven't used it that heavily. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I just wish it was, I wish it could be better cardstock, but it is such a sweet deck. And that is the Boo Tarot. Next up is the Brady Tarot. I've gone back and forth with this one a bit. It's an incredible deck, don't get me wrong. But I don't reach for it all that much. But then again, like I feel like I, I am a little oversaturated technically with animal decks. I do have um, more than I need for sure. I have animal decks that I really love. There's this one, the Oak Ash and Thorn, the Pacific Northwest. I mean, you'll see them all in this collection video, but this one is uniquely dark um, or intense than the other ones. This brings a little bit of the, I call it my National Geographic animal deck, and that remains true. It's It was all done with lino cut, which is just, in, it's incredible to think about. It's a very potent deck. I also have to admit that I am really loving that the guidebook was written um, by Rachel Pollock. It's really well done. So 
I do love this. This is the second edition, which has slightly larger cards, but without white borders. This was a repurchase for me because I did have the first edition with the white borders and I ended up rehoming that one. But I do like this version and it is a beautiful deck. I think it's still safe in my collection. Next up is the Carta Postel Tarot. I've been really having an amazing time with this deck. It is, I love how it opens up. It's vintage photography with a touch of collage and it is really lovely. It, I've got, I've had some just incredible um, ancestor readings using this deck. It's, it literally feels like you're sort of poking around in an attic box filled with vintage photos. And I just think that's really, really cool. I think it's meant to look like vintage postcards, maybe. Maybe that's what the postal means, I think. I don't know. I just really like it. I, I, I really get a lot out of working with it. So this is fun. And I don't really think I have a lot else that really feels like this in my collection, especially for tarot. I do have um, Oracle. I have like the Vintage Wisdom Oracle. I love the vibe of this. And I've been really enjoying working with it. So that is the Carta Postal Tarot. Ah yes, the Chicoli Tarot. I love this deck. I had such an amazing time getting to know this one. I, it gives really incredible readings. It's a very intuitive reader uh, deck for me. I don't feel like I necessarily read this in line with the tarot meanings 100% of the time. It feels like it does kind of go its own way. It definitely, in my experience, leans into the shadow pretty heavily. There is a darkness and a creepiness to this artwork that for some reason just really works for me, but it seems to lean sort of shadowy empowering. Like I feel like I get very, very empowering messages from this and I get readings that sort of help me identify things that are hard to look at and I think that's really valuable. So it has a very special place in my collection and I am absolutely in love with Nicoletta Ciccoli's artwork. It does something to me that I can't even really describe, but it's incredible. So the Ciccoli Tarot. Uh-oh. Okay, the Cosmo Beings Tarot. Gosh, you guys, you know how much I love Joanna Nelson's artwork and I just, I don't know if I can. I keep doing this. I think this is going to have to go in my maybe pile of decks that I'm just not sure are meant to stay with me. But it's so great. It is so great. I just, I feel like I just keep wanting it to be the Mons Tarot. I don't, I have issues, y'all. I don't, I don't even know. I freaking love it. I love looking at it. I think it's charming AF. It, I love the pops of red. I love the grayscale in this because it feels like we're kind of dipping into sort of a shadowy realm. And I have paired this with Mons Tarot and done kind of shadow and light readings. And it was fine. It just, it just, it was, it's still so darn cute that I, it doesn't tend to go very shadowy for me. And I think that's just a me thing. That's like a me issue. I love the star on this pig's bum. This one's definitely going to go in the maybe pile because I just don't know if it's meant to stay with me. We will see. The Crystal Unicorn Tarot. This is such a fun deck. Um, there's a part of me that isn't sure if this will stay with me long term, but it's it's cute. It's probably going to stay. It's probably, well, what am I even saying? It's probably going to stay. It's a very much a Rider Waite Smith deck, but just with unicorns instead of people. And there's nothing wrong with that. This was the first edition of the deck that was on Indiegogo. I have to admit, I kind of fell in love with it a bit. And um, it's a great RWS stand in for me. I do like this. I love the pastel colors. It's so sweet. Like it's not my ideal unicorn deck, but I mean like I'm making that so it's fine. <laughs> this is like just the, all the cute rainbow sweet, sweet vibes. I don't know. It's, it's cute. It's, it's not really a risk right now. It'll stay. It'll stay. I mean, there's only so many unicorn tarots, right? Like, so I feel like I got to hold on tight to the ones that I do have. The Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. I feel like I haven't used this in like a hot minute, but I still really like it. It feels like all the summer vibes to me. It's got that like beach holiday vacation feel. It's way more people-y than mermaid-y to me, it seems like. There's like a lot of sailors. There's a lot of like people. It doesn't feel... <laughs> That one cracks me up. It, it's fun, right? Like, I don't know, but I could see this eventually moving out of my collection, possibly. I don't think it's at risk right now. I don't really have anything else that sort of fits into this vibe. This does give me that sort of vintage feel that I kind of get from the Carta Postel, but like the, this is so distinctly summer, summertime vibes. Like, I don't feel like I have a lot of decks that feel straight up like summer. This is definitely one of them. The cardstock is also really, really divine. It's like buttery. It's not rose petally. It's it's really nice. So that is the uh, Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. I don't know what edition I have, but 
And that is that one. The Dark Goddess Tarot. This is the indie edition. This is really special and I do really love this deck. I now have the big guidebook because I bought the mass market version of the deck and then sent the cards to, I think it was to Danny, and kept the book. I used to use the book um, via the Fool's Dog Tarot app on my phone, but I really like having a tangible physical book to work with. I am considering doing my 2022 year ahead spread with this particular deck and working with one of these cards every month next year just to see if that how that feels but I would be hard pressed to let go of this indie edition of the uh, Dark Goddess. I really don't like the mass market the way the mass market is set up um, but I really love this version. It does I feel like it's the kind of thing that I tend to work with one card at a time though which is why I'm intrigued to maybe do a year ahead with it. We'll see but um, I feel like it holds a lot of big energy and I get a lot of depth out of my readings with it so I tend to only use a couple of cards at a time. Do enjoy it though for sure. Oh it's the deck that didn't want to stay gone. <laughs> the Darkness of Light Tarot. <laughs> okay so the funny story I did actually declutter this deck. Um, I had decided to rehome it in a this or that video and it, w it just had this whole adventure and it ended up getting lost in the mail. It was eventually found, got it sent back to me and it's just staying now. <laughs> I've decided, I feel like it was just, it just felt, it's, hard, it's really hard to describe, but like, it's like, it just didn't want to go. Like it didn't feel like it wanted to go. So then I got it, I, I just kind of wanted it back then. Um, I will see, I love this 10 of coins so much. I will see, but I believe this is gonna stay. Um, there's something unique about this artwork. It, it reminds me a bit of the Fountain Tarot, which I think is actually the deck that beat it out in a this or that. Um, it's still in order, how fun is that? Anyway, so this is back. It will remain to be seen over time, but it is so, so beautiful. And it is a whole mood for sure. The Darkness of Light. The Deviant Moon Borderless Tarot is very safe in my collection. This is a longtime favorite ever since it came in to my life. Um, it is my quintessential shadow work deck. It's the one that I think to reach for first when I want to do that kind of a reading. If I need to get called out, if I need to do some intense journal work, uh, personal growth work, I reach for this. Um, any kind of work that really ha I want to or need to be poked at a bit, this deck is definitely the one. Um, I don't really reach for it for general readings, but it is fabulous for shadow work or um, deep dives into things I maybe don't want to look at or that are uncomfortable to look at. It just does an incredible job at that. So I love the Deviant Moon Tarot. It's very safe in my collection. The Dream Vision Tarot is delightful. Um, I freaking love this. This feels like all the spirit guide energy ever. I don't even know how to fully describe it. This is the first uh, edition. It has since changed a bit and there is a new edition out. Um, I love this. This card just blew my mind. I mean, there's just so much incredible artwork in here and there's something about the specific airbrush quality to this that I'm really drawn to. It does very much feel to me like I'm communicating with the spirit realm, not ancestors, although I could see maybe that actually being an interesting thing to do with this, but otherworldly spirits that live on a different plane that exist on a different plane. It just feels really special in that way. And I, I love the color. I love the vibrancy of it and the tones. It's, it's beautiful. Love the dream vision tarot. Also, I think it would be really good for dream work specifically, but I haven't, I don't do a lot of dream work with cards, so I can't speak to that a ton, but I love this deck so much. This next one is brand new to my collection, the Disney Villains Tarot Deck and Guidebook. Oh my goodness. This is my first official Insight Editions deck. Um, and this is totally a Don Michelle made me do it. She was raving about this deck uh, and it is really good. I love, I love it. It, they did a really good job, I think, in the Minor Arcana, where I don't feel like it's, it's pippish, but it feels like the pips are set in the scenes and the tone of this world, of this Disney villain world. And they, a lot of them are not just pippish. They're very, they do feel like they have and hold a very specific meaning. Like this Ten of Wands is great. Some of them are a little more pippish than others, but it's a really fun deck. And I know most of these characters really well, not all of them. And I, I love how they're called out by name in the guidebook so you know who you're looking at or what's happening in the scene. I think that's super cool. I have not read with it yet. Again, this is brand, brand new to my collection, but I'm so glad I scooped it up. I've been playing a lot of Disney Dreamlight Valley and 
this is just, there's a lot of villains um, that are showing up in that game and I'm really enjoying this deck. Um, the idea of this deck, I should say more accurately, quite a bit in that context because I've just been kind of living it up in Disney lately. So a lot of fun. I will keep you guys posted, but this is brand new to me. And finally, the Druid Craft Tarot. Okay, so I technically have two copies of this deck in here. I'll show you my trimmed copy. My other copy is my training wheels um, deck from my tarot training wheel series, but I have not uh, retrimmed it yet. I keep saying I'm going to, and I haven't yet. I want to trim it so that it's fully borderless uh, with no titles. I think that'd be really cool and use a smaller corner round, rounder on it than I used for the, um, for this one. But the Druidcraft Tarot is a good all rounder, wonderful Celtic deck. It's got a lot of nature -y vibes. It's also a very masculine deck, which is really great. I don't have a ton of decks that have a more masculine vibe and this one definitely does. Like there's boys in the three of uh, cups, which is unusual. I just, I like it. I like it an awful lot. And I'm, I really should trim my other copies so I would reach for it more often because it's a great deck and I recommend it all the time. It's got a really great uh, druidic or pa pagan kind of feel to it too. So if you're really turned off by some of the original Original images of like the Rider Waite Smith. This one's a great alternative and I think it shows the meanings of the cards really really well So the Druid Craft is definitely an oldie but a goodie. There are different versions of it You can get online one has a guide a big guidebook with it and one has a small guidebook with it So if you purchase it just double check the which version you're getting so you know for sure And that is it for A through D I will see you guys when I do letters E through L in my tarot collection in the meantime Thank you so so much for hanging out with me extra big Thank you goes out to the unicorn fam for helping support what I do here here. It really, really means a lot to me. It makes a big difference in what I'm doing. For everybody watching, your comments, your likes, your subscribes, when you hit the bell, all of those things really, really support the channel and they help more than you know. So thank you so much for participating with me here in this space. I genuinely appreciate all of you. Thank you so, so much and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye!